Buzzheads, Curtis Tucker here with That Buzz Guy Podcast. I am back. I did not disappear. I did not go away. You can't keep me from the podcast. So anyway, I am back with a quick update. Well, not a quick update, but for a update episode, going to kind of tell you guys what I've been up to, some of the things that I've been thinking, and some of the things that I've got coming up on the way. So this is a very unscripted uh, episode where I'm just going to kind of go with the flow and tell you guys uh, kind of kind of a journal episode of what's been going on. So I did listen to or I did read an article on Medium the other day and it was talking about how to have a successful uh, blog and uh, I think the guy was really stressing and he stressed it twice in it uh, about how your blog and I guess you could assume your podcast is not about you. You know, he's trying to stress that your podcast is not about you. It's about the people that you're reading. But um, I guess that's where I'm going wrong because uh, my blog and my podcast actually is about me. But it's not like I want it to be about me. It's But it's about me showing you guys that if I can do certain things, you guys can do certain things. So me telling you that, uh, you know, I've flown with the Thunderbirds or that I made money uh, taking pictures is, you know, talking about me, but it's telling you that, hey, if you started and became a media person, you could have the opportunities that I had. Or if you got better at photography, you could start making money with it. Or if you built a website or started a blog or a a YouTube channel or podcast, you know. So anyway, so I hate to, you know, I don't want this episode to, or even the whole podcast or the whole blog, you know, I mean, it is called The Buzz Guy, so it's it's about me, but it's about me to help you guys. So it's my journey. So I'm chronicling my journey to help you guys with your journey. So I hope that makes sense. I hope uh, I hope that guy's wrong, and uh, if if he's not, let me know. If you guys are tired of hearing about me, uh, let me know and tell me what you guys would uh, like me to talk about. But I was kind of uh, going over the prior episodes, and I think I I think I got some good podcast episodes out where I was kind of wanted to motivate you guys. My biggest motivation for you guys is to get started, no matter what, get started now. I've talked to a few of you, so I know a few of you have started your own podcast on Anchor, and you even got some people that you know to start their own podcast on Anchor. So uh, we know that you can start completely free without microphone or anything on the Anchor app. We know that you can start a YouTube channel without any cost. We know that you can uh, start a blog on Weebly or Wix and uh, then you'll eventually want to upgrade to WordPress. But you can start all the things that I'm doing completely free, completely easily. You can start that tonight, tomorrow, this morning, whenever you're listening to this. So I uh, just want to continue to stress that. But uh, I think I've gotten you through kind of the basics of podcasting, blogging, a little bit, maybe not a whole lot about uh, YouTube, but some SEO, some some web and personal branding things. And so looking over some other podcasts and listening to some other episodes, I've noticed that, you know, once you get into this and you get going, um, you start to run out of ideas. And I notice all these other uh, podcasts that are in the marketing entrepreneur business, they kind of all do the same episodes. And, and some of them are just, you know, a lot of them are about fear. Everybody's about fear. They they go on on about how you guys aren't going to start a blog or a podcast because you're afraid, you're fear. And uh, to me, that's total bunk. Um, it's not that you're, uh, most of you are afraid. It's that most of you don't know where to start and you don't know what to use how to go about it, what ideas to start with. I, I don't think it's fear. I think it's just lack of knowledge, lack of information. So, but anyway, um, and then some of the episodes that I've been listening to on other podcasts lately, just they just go off on these weird tangents of, of cosmic reality, deep within yourself stuff that makes no sense to me. And by the time the episode's over, I'm like, what did they even say? And did I learn anything? Because if I did, I don't know it. So, you know, what I want to do is is make my podcast and blog and the things that I do more practical, where hopefully at the end of it, you guys can, you know, you've, you've either been entertained a little bit, uh, gained a little bit of knowledge, or, you know, I just, I just don't want to get into that weird psychological, cosmic 
plane that these other people are going to. So we're just going to keep everything that I'm doing basic. So, so really what happened, I disappeared for a couple of weeks. Uh, part of that was due to having a daughter that was graduating from high school. So now I'm going to put on my proud dad cap. You guys, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you see that I just did that. So uh, my daughter uh, just graduated from high school. I believe there was just a little over 400 kids in her class. She graduated valedictorian, had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with me. That was all her and her mom's motivation and brains. Uh, but then she was also on what we call Mayfay Court. Um, they had to finish out their dance season with recital. We had uh, nationals in Branson. So within one week, we had three recitals. We had baccalaureate, we had Mayfate, then we had to drive to Branson. Then they danced a little bit. We drove back to Enid. Now, this is a five hour drive. So we drove back to Enid for graduation practice and graduation. Then we woke up and we drove back to Branson and then they finished up their nationals there. Then we turned around and drove back to Enid. Um, and then they had their um, graduation party and we had Father's Day and so a lot of stuff was happening and uh, just traveling to Branson. I drove 20 over 20 hours that week just going back and forth to Branson and so that week I just absolutely had zero time and I wasn't even home uh, you know and couldn't do a an episode and then the next week is when I kind of got to thinking you know, am I going in the right direction? And I don't feel like I am. So let me lay that out there. Um, the, that Buzz Guy podcast is going to continue. Um, I'm just, uh, and this is why I tell you guys, you guys got to get started. You do it for a couple of weeks, do it for a couple of months. If you're going to start to find things that work, find the things that don't work, find subjects that you're interested in, subjects that you're not interested in. So I'm finding that I'm not so much interested in teaching um, technical stuff every week, you know, like, you know, how, here's how you put this peg in this circle. You know, I don't want to do that every week. So, um, I originally wasn't thinking about going the interview route, but, uh, I've gotten a few people that have requested to be on the show. So I'm going to do, uh, we're going to go the interview route here in a couple episodes and, uh, I'm going to try to make those fun and interesting. I definitely will not be interviewing the people so um, I'm, I'm guessing that some of you that listen to this podcast probably listen to some of the bigger names in entrepreneur, marketing, business, um, you know, those type of things. And uh, what you'll notice is a lot of them, number one, they interview each other because they're all either coaches or they're selling some type of product or sales funnel or something like that. So they all interview each other to help promote, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, but they all interview each other. Then when somebody releases a new product, they interview and they're on all the other podcasts. And then if somebody writes a book, they're on all the podcasts. And then if some entrepreneur or marketer that maybe doesn't even have their own podcast writes a book, then that person's on every episode. So, you know, after I listen to all these different people, I end up hearing the same people, you know, five, six times. And I know exactly what they're going to say by the time they're on the last podcast that I've listened to. So what we're going to do here on that buzz guy is try to keep it a little more, uh, what do I want to say? Local little guy, you know, people, people that are more on our level. Um, and as a reminder, let's say, uh, maybe you're somebody out there that's listening to this podcast or watching this YouTube channel for the first time. Um, I do not really consider myself what some people label as an entrepreneur. I'm more of an indiepreneur, meaning I'm not going to build a million dollar business that requires a building and offices and a hundred employees and then have those employees run my business for me and then sell it to a big corporation for $5 million and get investors and all that. That's, that's kind of what, you know, the, um, kind of the modern, more business-like entrepreneur does. What I do is I wake up every morning and look for ways to make money so I don't have to get a job. So I'm more of an entrepreneur. I'm a guy that, uh, here's my office. If you're looking on the YouTube channel, watching the video, uh, this is where I like to sit, where I like to spend my day. Um, I want to stay here. I don't want to have to go get a big office or a building and, and get into taxes and hiring and firing and uh, insurance and unemployment and, and all that. So I want to stay uh, entrepreneur, maybe work with freelancers and contract labor, things like that, uh, partnerships. And so that's where, where I'm going to stay. 
And so, um, where was I going with that? Now I'm completely lost. Maybe, maybe I do need a script to follow. But anyway, so um, just kind of redefining myself. That's uh, oh, so so my guests. That's kind of be kind of where my guests are going to be. They're going to be more on our level. You know, small entrepreneurs, uh, people just learning, getting started in the field. Uh, one of the guys that started. Uh, a podcast after listening to me. I'm going to have him on the show. He owns an auto body shop here in Enid, Oklahoma. Hey, Ken, a shout out to you. And uh, so we're going to talk to him and find out, uh, you know, how he decided to kind of become an entrepreneur. And that's what I'm going to try to, I'll try to drag out of people is the, you know, why are you an entrepreneur? How is that uh, different than working for somebody? Do you like it? What are the benefits to you? Um, things like that, and then we'll talk about how they promote their business because you know that's one of the big things is uh, I want people to learn how to promote themselves, how to increase awareness, how to build your brand, and so the, some of the things that we're going to be doing. So, so some of the things that I'm working on right now, I continue to do Enid Buzz. So if you ever wonder, hey, I wonder what he does most of the day or what his kind of his full-time business is, uh, you can go to enidbuzz.com and basically I continue to do uh, online digital news for the town of Enid, Oklahoma in Northwest Oklahoma and I basically provide uh, new information, new events, new business news, closings and openings and uh, just all the latest happenings every day. I post every day. So there's a new post on the blog every day. I add obits, jobs, uh, classifieds, and then on the Facebook page I'm uploading recipes every day, health news, um, events that are coming up, businesses that are open, specials that are going on. Um, and so that's that's what I do most of the time full time and then uh, continue to do weekly for about three years now. Todd Wheeler and I, we continue to do the 70s Buzz podcast and we are looking for some females that grew up in the 70s. If you want to be uh, kind of a co-host on our show for a couple episodes, let us know, buzz at buzzheadmedia.com. But go, please go to um, the 70s Buzz podcast and listen to a couple episodes and, and uh, see if that would be a good fit for you. But again, if you're a female out there and you love the 70s and you grew up in the 70s, we'd love to have you on the show. We're looking for guests for that podcast because we've done... Uh, uh, we're about to reach 140 episodes, and we are definitely uh, scrambling for ideas every week because we've talked about just about everything under the sun. We don't want to go through every single movie made in the 70s or every single uh, band or song because there are a few other podcasts that that's all they do is 70s movies or 70s songs. I don't believe anybody out there is doing a 70s podcast like ours where we talk about uh, green stamps and space food sticks and finding tadpoles in the creek and you know just uh, things that scared us the the freedom of running and playing games outdoors you know we, we talk about all the kids stuff oh and so uh, so so we're continue to do that weekly so you can listen to those new episodes every week and that's one of the new ventures that I've been um, working on I haven't work, been working a lot on it but I'm getting my ideas together so um, I thought about it off and on for a long time but I'm finally going to do it because I'm telling you guys to start your podcast, your website, your YouTube channel. So um, I don't want to be a hypocrite and not start my own thing that I've been talking about. So I am going to, um, I've started on all of the things that I need to get ready to write a book. So I'm going to write a fictional book, but it's based on my life growing up in the 70s um, in Enid, Oklahoma and mainly in the summers so you know there was so much freedom and we did so many things we, we lived outdoors and away from our parents every summer in the 70s and so it's going to be about this uh, group of kids um, and and when you're thinking about what the what's the movie going to be a lot uh, like you know combine Goonies with um, um, Stand By Me, Lost Boys um, you know, The Outsiders, just kind of combine all of those. But it's, it's going to be a little more fun. There might not be, you know, I don't know what the adventure is going to be, but it's just going to be reminding all of us that grew up or partially grew up in the 70s of all of the cool things that uh, our kids or the, the younger people that we know are definitely missing out on because 
uh, it was a completely different generation, completely outdoorsy and free and, and fun. So anyway, that book, um, and again, it's going to be a fictional book, but the characters and the stories are all going to be pretty much, I'd say, 85% based on actual events that happened to me when I was that age. So the ages of the kids in the book, I believe, are going to range from 11, 12, and 13. And all of us, all the kids in the book are going to be riding our banana seat bikes and just uh, cruising around our neighborhoods and our little town. And I believe I'm going to make the setting be the summer of 1977. And uh, it's almost the exact year that I needed to be for those ages that we would have been. But I think it's going to be a year off, so I'm going to have to adjust a little bit. So again, everything in the book will not be based exactly on actual events, but loosely based on actual events. And the, the number one intent of doing the book is not only to get a really fun, memorable, nostalgic book on the 70s out there, so when people read it, they every, you know, literally every paragraph you're going to be saying, oh, wow, I remember that, or I've forgotten about that. But the intent is for somebody to pick it up and for it to be made into a fun movie. So that, uh, and I do have a friend that I went to school with that is a screenwriter out in uh, California. And so, and he actually will be one of the characters in the book because he was one of the guys from the neighborhood. So I may uh, try to get a hold of him and work with him. But anyway, I'll keep you guys updated on that book. I think it's going to be really fun and uh, hopefully I can get that done fairly quick. So, so pre preparing for that, I've been getting ideas. Again, I've got the title of the book, which I'm not going to divulge just yet. I've got the characters. I've got character names. I've got the year. I've got some ideas. Um, and what's been helping me is I've been going out. So it's blazing hot in Oklahoma right now, which it was back in the 70s as well. Um, I believe tomorrow the heat indexes are going to be close to, could be between 105 and 111. Uh, just sun beating down. But what I've been doing is going out at 3 o'clock every afternoon and walking for an hour. And when I walk, um, I've been listening to songs from the 70s and uh, just kind of thinking to myself and so the heat is beating down on me and you know when we were kids in the 70s you know the heat beat down on you and um you know there was uh, i i never lived in a house when i was a kid that had air conditioning you know we had a water cooler but you know it just it's just remembering the heat and remembering that when you needed to drink water you didn't pull out your water bottle because we didn't have water bottles in the 70s we uh, if there was a hose in somebody's uh, yard, you ran over and you turned it on, you got a drink, you turned it off and you left and really nobody asked any questions. So anyway, just so the walk that I go on every day in the afternoon to sweat and get sun and, and it just helps me remember the smells. Um, I love it because part of my walk is, is near a country club and so they're usually out cutting the grass. So the, the smell of the grass being cut reminds me of summers in the 70s and we just had the 4th of July and so anyway it just all you know comes together and hopefully I'll have a lot of it written by the end of the summer and uh, again that's where most of uh, it's going to be set is the summer of 1977 so I hope you guys are looking forward to that something just popped into my head I wanted to say also congratulations to my daughter so not only do we have to get her out of high school with all those events because they have been postponed and then they basically did all of them in one week. But now we're preparing her for college, which is uh, the University of Oklahoma, where she made the uh, OU Palm team. Um, so congratulations to her. But uh, you know, now we're dealing with how is college going to work? Are they, you know, when do they go? When do they come home? What can they do? Do they have to wear masks? Do they, you know, blah blah blah. So anyway, so we're kind of dealing with that. I know, uh, I know everybody is. So. Um, uh, we'll, we'll all continue to deal with that. I hope you guys out there, um, I hope a lot of you have gotten jobs, gotten your jobs back. If you haven't, um, please go all the way back to episode number one and get something started online because um, as I was talking to Ken the other day, I went over um, and he's going to do some advertising on Nina Buzz, but we were talking and and I was telling him that, uh, you know, when you, when you get online and you build things like blogs and and YouTube channels and you start podcasts and, and you do things like that. I said, you know, if you stay consistent and you stay online, there's almost no way that eventually you can't not make money. And so I was talking about how you know, I didn't, 
I'm not a photographer. I never took photography classes. I never set out to be a photographer, but because of uh, building Enid Buzz, I needed to take pictures because I'd go to events and I needed to take pictures of the things going on at the event and the people speaking. And so I kind of, you know, got some nice cameras and I started upgrading cameras. But then, you know, the iPhones came out and uh, I tell you what, this iPhone 11 Pro, uh, man, these things take such great pictures. Um, so go to, you can go to uh, Curtis Tucker, my Facebook page, or find me on um, I think it's cartoons on Instagram or uh, Enid Buzz on Instagram and you can see some of my sunrise uh, pictures and stuff there and, and basically all of them are taken with uh, one version or another of the iPhones but anyway so I was telling him that you know I started taking so many sunrise pictures and pictures of trees and skies and things around and buildings around Enid that, uh, you know, a bank came to me one day and, uh, you know, one of the more popular banks in town and said, hey, we're putting together our annual calendar. Could we use your photos for each month of the calendar? So, the, so one year, I can't remember what year it was, 2017, something like that, um, they put out their yearly calendar and every picture for the month was uh, one of my photos and so you know I got paid for that and, and I've been hired to take pictures at events and I've had people you know pay for just single pictures for different things and I've had people ask to use the the photographs on their websites or in magazines or things so so anyway that's just another example of how if you start putting yourself out there eventually I'm telling you you're probably gonna start making money somewhere down the line so anyway if you've been out of a job um, I hope you haven't sat on your butt since March until now and done nothing uh, it was a perfect opportunity for you guys to have started something and it doesn't have to be online I'm the guy that uh, I want you to come to and listen uh, to to build things online but some of my guests like um, Ken and some other people hopefully they will teach you guys how to build businesses that aren't necessarily online and then what, what I'll do is teach you how to take your brick and mortar or service that's not online and help you bring that online or at least uh, market it using um, online you know, social media and websites and things like that. So uh, hopefully that'll be mixed. So look for a few changes coming to with that Buzz Guy podcast. And again, it will be guests and things like that um, coming up. And uh, if you follow, I know a couple of you follow me uh, personally on my Facebook page. It's uh, Curtis Tucker. And uh, I also have that Buzz Guy Facebook page, which I haven't been updating very well just because I update my personal one so much. But um, so... Uh, I don't know if I've talked that much on the podcast, but um, I live in Northwest Oklahoma and I live in a neighborhood called the Woodlands. Well, it's called the Woodlands because it's got a lot of woods and, and you know, Oklahoma and Enid itself is flat, barren, not a whole lot of trees, except in, you know, certain areas where they planted trees. But, um, and I don't know why the Woodlands has as many trees as it does. I don't know if it was originally somebody planted a bunch here or if it just happened to be the one spot that had a lot of trees and so somebody said hey I'm gonna build a neighborhood in there but anyway they did so it's a circle neighborhood so there's only one way in one way out you come in and you drive around a circle and there's about I don't know 36 houses um, some of uh, the houses are on the inside which is the island and then some of the houses are on the outside and uh, so my house is a second house on the outside, but because of the woods and um, all the nice trees, we've got a lot of animals here. So um, the past few years, I've let some Carolina wrens come uh, each spring and uh, I keep my garage door open enough to let them come inside and build a nest every year. So they come every spring and they build a nest in the garage and um, lay eggs and their babies hatch and they take them out in the driveway and teach them how to fly and then they go away and then they come back the next spring. And so, you know, when I know that they're up there, um, you know, I close the garage doors at night and they, I think, I'm not sure if the male stays, he probably goes off somewhere, but the female stays in the nest. And then in the morning, I open the garage door and then the male comes in and feeds her or she leaves. And, uh, but during the day, usually what I'll do is keep the garage door um, cracked so um, they can get in and out under the, under the garage door. But um, I kind of jumped it ahead. So, so my house is in the woodlands, um, surrounded by woods. 
and then we've got a garage, uh, a two-car garage, but off to the side of the garage is a door you can go through into a room that is basically separated from the house. You have to go through the garage to get from this office to the house or from the house to the garage. So, so it's really kind of a, um, it's, it's a garage office. And so that's where my office is. And so what's cool about it is I've got two doors and I can open those doors. And if I open my garage door and my office door to the garage, I can see completely outside. So I can open the door and I can see the birds and the rabbits and the squirrels and everything. And so I've watched them for, uh, I think we've lived here uh, over five years now. So I've watched them and uh, just recently decided to uh, try to become really good friends with them. And so I started putting out some bird seed. So I've got the Carolina wrens that come in and, and build the nest. And then um, last year we had some cardinals that had built a nest in a bush close to the house. And um, I had noticed them, so I kind of followed them and took pictures of them. And then I noticed, um, I just happened to be around when their babies hopped out of their nest. And I videoed last year those cardinals teaching their babies how to fly. Well, again, the cardinals built another nest, but in a bush, a different bush, but still close to the house. So anyway, they're the main two birds that come, uh, male and female. The male is red. And I, if you didn't know, um, female cardinals are kind of brownish with a, just a tint of red on them. Um, and so they uh, come eat out of, I, I put out a, a kind of a, a lid and I put the bird seed in the lid. And so they come eat out of that. And it, it's kind of weird. Um, rarely do any of the birds come eat out of it. Just, and I don't know if it's the kind of bird seed that I bought. Uh, I just grabbed a bag at a hardware store, but had a lot of sunflower seeds. And so I noticed that the squirrels were coming around and eating a lot of the sunflower seeds. And so um, I kind of started watching them. I, I think I've got maybe three, possibly four. I know of three regular squirrels that come eat out of the lid and they run the bird, the, the cardinals off. But the cardinals had babies again this year. They did bring the babies over to the lid and all four of them would eat out of the lid. Um, the babies have since flown off and disappeared. I don't see them anymore, but the parents still hang around. But anyway, so these squirrels, um, two males and one female that I'm sure of, um, they must live, I think, in a tree pretty close to, if not my yard, pretty close because they're here every day and they bury their nuts in my yard and, and spend all their time, you know, between me and the really close neighbors. And so anyway, um, one day uh, they had eaten all the sunflower seeds, so there weren't any in there. And one of the little squirrels, um, I thought, he, you know, he's, he seems to be the smallest squirrel, he shows up and I know that he's out of sunflower seed, so I, I stick one out in my hand and start talking to him. And he kind of kind of does this weird zigzag and his tail's going really fast. And it's really cool if you watch squirrels, they, they lift their tail over their back and spread it out to make them look twice the size that they are. And then whatever side they're pointing to you, that tail kind of covers them. So you, so if, you know, if there was a animal trying to get to them and eat them, the animal wouldn't actually know how big the squirrel was. They think it was at least twice the size. So it's kind of one of their defense mechanisms. So anyway, he was doing that. And so I, I kind of got the impression that, wow, this guy, you know, wants to come eat. And so I, oh, and so I'd left the, the bucket or the bag with the food at the front of my garage. And after a while, I noticed that, that a couple of the male squirrels would actually go all the way through the garage and start eating out of that bag until they heard me and then they would scurry off. And then one day I came home and, or I came out of my office and there was a raccoon. So the raccoon had been eating out of it. And then the next day the raccoon came back and he was eating out of it again. And so, so there's four raccoons now that live actually on the neighbor's property. I, I don't know if they live in his attic, but I, I think they may live under um, his shed. But uh, anyway, but they, they come visit me every now and then. But anyway, I was intrigued by um, the little squirrel. So I moved, I put the bird seed in a bucket and I put it in my office so they couldn't eat it while I wasn't looking. But I kept my door open and one day I look up and this little squirrel, this little male squirrel was in my office. 
And so, and so the Carolina score or Carolina wrens every now and then will pop into my office and look around and fly out. And I've had the Cardinal actually fly in, land on something and then fly out. So they've all actually been in my office at one time or another. And so the squirrel comes in, he's looking around, um, and then he leaves. And so I kind of know he's interested. And then another time he comes in and I catch him on the side of the bucket, leaning in the bucket, stealing sunflower seeds. So that was when I thought, okay, he's hungry and he wants sunflower seeds. So I went and I sat down in the doorway and, uh, or I stuck my hand at anyway, eventually I got him to come start eating sunflowers out of my hand. And then eventually I was able to sit in the doorway. So now for, I think four days in a row, by the time you're hearing this, um, probably by the time you're hearing this will be the fifth day. But so every morning now we've kind of got a ritual where uh, about mid morning he finds his way here and uh, comes into the office. And when I know that he's there, he kind of runs out and waits for me. and. I sit down and start pulling sunflower seeds out of the bucket and I feed him by hand. So I, and I've been chronicling this on video. Um, and so if you go to, again, go to the, my Curtis Tucker Facebook page, you can see the videos, a uh, really cool little squirrel. And he's actually size wise out of the three that do come visit. And then the ones around the neighborhood, he seems to me to be the smallest. Um, so anyway, uh, one day when he was being a little skittish, so I can't, you know, if I make any sudden moves or any loud noises, he, he kind of jumps back. And so, uh, one morning I thought to myself, you know, you're killing me smalls. And, uh, so that's what I named him. So his name is small. So anyway, get on my Facebook page. And I think I am also going to do a uh, YouTube video of the progress of, of working his braveness up to eating out of my hand. So now, now he actually kind of almost climbs up my leg while I'm sitting there because I put the seeds at the top by my knee and he kind of climbs up and, and eats. So I'm trying to figure out what, you know, what I can do with him next. But anyway, so he's my new uh, pet, my new mascot, um, Smalls the Squirrel. So I know I'm all over the place on this episode, but I just really wanted to get an episode out to you guys to let you know I have not disappeared. Um, let me know what you think about these uh, different episodes where I'm just updating. So, so I'm writing the book. I've got the new squirrel. I've got one girl heading off to college. My youngest daughter is going to be a senior. Um, I've got Ina Buzz going. I've got the uh, uh, 70s Buzz podcast going. I'm doing all the social media updates that I can. Still taking pictures. I've gotten more requests for cartoons and graphic design and web design. Um, the last two or three weeks and I have in a very long time. So um, I'm breaking down and saying yes to some people. Oh, and then I've got a new venture coming up with another partner um, that uh, I'll announce probably uh, in the next couple of weeks. But then another guy that I partner with on some stuff with Enid Buzz, um, he decided to try to open up our old drive-in. And so we've got savethedrivein.com slash Enid. And so he's kind of built a crowdfunding website for that. So um, I've been helping him promote that and doing some Q&A on that. So I'm trying to open up the old drive-in here in Enid, Oklahoma. Been working on that. Um, I've also, um, I think at the beginning of the uh, podcast, uh, at the very beginning, I talked about how I was finding money and I was going to take that money and grow it, it into more money without ever having to like work for it. So, so I had an old uh, trailer that went on the back of a mower that had sat in our yard for, you know, four years since we lived here. I never did anything with it because I didn't have a riding lawnmower. So one day I got this wild hair and I thought, well, I'm going to clean that up and post it on Facebook and sell it. So I, I sold it for $60. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take that $60 and I'm going to buy something that I can, you know, turn around and make more money with. And so I, you've probably seen some shows and heard some stories. And so eventually let's see where I can get with that money. So, um, so 60 bucks was sitting in the account. And then, um, so every day when I walk, and so part of my afternoon walks is by that time, all the morning golfers on the golf course have gone. And so I pick up golf balls. And so, um, l last year I had over 200. And so I sold those you know, completely free. I pick them up for free. Doesn't cost me anything. And so I sold those for a hundred dollars. So now I've got $160 to go towards something. And then, so, so far this season, um, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm over 
probably 100, 125. So I'm getting ready. Uh, maybe when I reach 150 golf balls, I'll sell those, which hopefully will get me, you know, somewhere in the 200 to 250 dollar range. And then maybe I'll take that money and buy my first. I don't know, something, item where I know I can flip it and make more money. And so that's going to be the intent of that. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, I know I talked about helping my daughter start a business. Uh, then we got really busy with trying to keep up with everything. We're still going to be working on that, although uh, one daughter's going off to college and she's going to be really busy and not be able to help out a whole lot with the business. Um, the other daughter wants to continue with it. So um, I'll keep you guys, we haven't done much with it here lately, but I will keep you guys updated on that. So I've got that going. Um, gosh, uh, what else do I have going? I know I've got uh, probably 20 different things um, that I'm not thinking of. Uh, right now, you know, we have the retail store. Oh, and we have the downtown office, a really cool office and a really cool office space um, downtown, I believe. We are on our we're on our we were on our second year at that uh, first floor location, but on our third year being in that building, and then our fourth year of being having an office in downtown Enid. And as much fun as I'm having here in my office and not having anybody working for me, and that downstairs office uh, in downtown Enid not having any windows. Um, I just quit spending any time there. So this is our last month. This is the last month on our lease. So we're going to pay, uh, I'm about to pay our, our rent this month and then we're done. We're going to close that down, which closes our store down. Um, but we are still looking for possible places to reopen Bottle Caps Mercantile, but we still do have the t-shirts. You can still buy t-shirts online. Um, I'm actually selling those online on the Curtis Tucker or that buzzguy.com website. But if you go to bcmerc.com, it will forward you to my blog where you can buy uh, some t-shirts there. I'm going to add more designs. And then, oh, that's another thing. Uh, and so we've got that going. Um, and then um, I've been working with my Shaggy Duck brand. And so I'm really wanting to start the Shaggy Duck brand to be a... A, um, a fashion brand. And so, you know, if you listen to me or read anything or, or anything about me, I'm all about uh, summer shorts, sneakers, backward hats, uh, t-shirts, sunshine, beach, sand, water, uh, outdoors, anything like that. And so I want to build a brand of t-shirt designs and short matching shorts, uh, really cool sneakers, socks, uh, things like that, um, and that will be the Shaggy Deck brand. And so uh, I've been, and so if you think about uh, Johnny Cupcakes, if you don't know anything about Johnny Cupcakes, go to johnnycupcakes.com and check out his brand. Um, Vineyard Vines, think about that brand. Think about Cycle Bunny. So think about the Cycle Bunny logo, and then think about the um, Vineyard Vines logo, and then think about the original Johnny Cupcakes logo. So I'm, I'm working on the Shaggy Duck logo to kind of go with that genre or that look, and then that will be my first official Shaggy Duck um, design. And then from there, I'll start building that brand just like Psycho Bunny did, just like Johnny Cupcakes did, just like Vineyard Vines did, just like Life is Good did. And so, um, so, so probably uh, as far as making money, that may be how I make money with this podcast is just reminding you guys to go buy um, the Shaggy Duck wear. So anyway, I've always loved um, the Shaggy Duck brand and the Shaggy Duck name. Uh, if you didn't know, I've always been a Scooby-Doo fan and I was trying to think of a company name for my graphic design business back in the day and Shaggy Duck popped into my head and I, need, I knew it was going to be online and I needed a .com and I needed somebody, nobody in the world to already be using it and uh, wanted all the usernames to be available on social media and I wanted it to be fun and it was related to an animal and it was also related to Scooby-Doo. And uh, so a shaggy duck, um, the definition really of a shaggy duck is uh, just being really casual, just being not really caring about looking prim and proper and, and all that. So think of if you've ever been to a store and there's a lot of toy stuffed animals there and sometimes you see those ducks or those stuffed animals that just have the really, really poofy hair or material 
uh, that actually kind of makes them look shaggy. And so that's kind of where I got the name was uh, a shaggy duck. And so and I've got samples. Um, here's one. If you're looking on the YouTube channel, this is kind of kind of what I mean. If you look at this stuffed duck, this is kind of a shaggy duck. So this is one example of, of a shaggy duck. And so that's where that name comes from. But anyway, um, I didn't want um, to let the brand die. Actually, my bank account, my main bank account at the bank is still uh, under Shaggy Duck. And so I go in and sometimes they have a new teller and the new teller will say, uh, yeah, what's Shaggy Duck? And, and then I'm like at a loss for words because I, I don't know. I don't used to be graphic design. Now it's the name of my bank account and eventually it will be a lifestyle brand and, and uh, lifestyle clothing brand. So uh, really looking forward to do I wish I had more. I wish it was 10 of me because I got so many ideas. I want to do so many things. Um, I want you guys to do so many things. The reason this website, the blog, the podcast is all about me because it's about me because I want to teach you guys. I want to motivate you guys. I want to inspire you guys. So um, again, I hope that's not a bad thing that uh, a lot of the things that I'm talking about are things that I've done or that I'm doing, but um, it's just to tell you guys that, you know, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I mean, you guys can do it. Please go do it. Do it. Start today. Um, get out there and start that podcast or that blog or that YouTube channel or write that book or, um, you know, just there's just so many different ways of making money. Uh, it's just incredible. And I have started a Patreon account and uh, Leo uh, contributed to that. I want to say thank you so much, Leo. I know I still haven't answered your email. My emails have gone totally crazy. But um, Patreon account is just kind of a way of giving your fans maybe something extra where they can, uh, if you don't have a way of making money, which right now I don't have a way of making money with the, the blog or the podcast other than some ads on the blog, um, it's a way for your fans to basically kind of donate or contribute money to, to you. And I haven't really delved into it. And, and the reason I set that up was to teach you guys how to set up your own and how they work and if, if they work. And, and I just haven't been able to spend enough time. But if you know me, you know that uh, when I hear of something or I think of something, I go ahead, just like I tell you guys, I go ahead and set it up, get it started. And then later on, I can come back to it and, and work on it and finish it. So I went ahead and set up a Patreon account put a link to it on the uh, thatbuzzguy.com website. And again, I haven't like gone to it and created something like, you know, if you guys contribute $20 a month, you're gonna get an extra episode that nobody else can hear. You're gonna get a t-shirt. You know, I, haven't, I haven't gone that far, but my intent is to finally sit down and, and spend some time on that. And so uh, when I do that, then that'll be an episode where I can teach you, I can, even though it's about me, and my Patreon account, the reason I did it was to teach, you know, I can't teach you guys how to start a Patreon account and how it works if I don't do it. So it, so no matter what that guy said, yes, it's got to be about me before it can be about you. I, I don't know. I'm still perplexed by what that guy said. So anyway, and, and then this YouTube and this podcasting, I, I can't teach you guys if, if I don't know how to do it myself. So yeah, it is about me, but it's about me wanting it to be about you. And, and I would love to hear about you guys. So you guys uh, send me some emails, uh, send me some texts. Um, right now, the best way to get a hold of me is buzz at buzzheadmedia.com. Um, I'd like to spend time on Twitter and that's uh, at Enid Buzz right now. Or if you just type in that buzz guy, my account will pop up. You can hit me up there. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. And, I, and I've and i been trying to figure out what can I do with that darn TikTok. And, and so lately I've been adding some of the squirrel videos. Um, I just don't know how to use TikTok. Uh, I don't know how to, what to tell you guys to do with TikTok. And so, um, so I can't do an episode on TikTok until I make it all about me and learn what TikTok can do for you because of what it's done for me. And so, um, but we may not even have to deal with that because uh, the U.S. government may shut it down. I, I don't think they will, but uh, they're talking about that right now. And so I don't know. I, you know, nobody, sometimes we don't know what the truth is, whether the Chinese are stealing our information through TikTok off of your phone or not. I don't know. 
uh, research it. Don't believe everything you read on Facebook. Go to um, news sources like Forbes and Wall Street Journal and and you know Newsweek or you know whatever some legitimate news sources and read articles there. Don't read the crap that's on the freaking Facebook. Um, most of those links are to parody websites, and if you don't look close enough, uh, about. 50% of the people think everything on Facebook that uh, links to a website is real and about 50% of everything, well, 75% of everything is actually not real. It's fake. So uh, beware of what you're reading on Facebook. Um, what else do I got for you guys? I'm trying to think. Um, you guys let me know. Let me know what episodes uh, you would like to hear about, some, you know, what what is maybe something I've done that I could teach you guys or talk about, or um, if you guys want to be on the show, if you've got some cool story to talk about how you've been an entrepreneur or how your podcast or your blog or your YouTube channel is really taking off or it's doing something cool, let me know. I will get you on the podcast. Um, a shout out to Zach Baker. Zach, um, because of the COVID-19, you know, he was playing, he and his wife were singing and doing stuff in their home and uh, performing live on Facebook and, and some other uh, uh, social media and, and they set up some accounts for donations and stuff and then he had me on, he kind of started a Facebook, kind of a more of a vlog than a, a podcast, but I was on there, but he continues to perform. Now he's back into some of the uh, restaurants and bars that he was performing in. But anyway, he continues on. Uh, you people, you got to stay consistent. You got to keep plugging away. You got to be patient. Um, don't let people discourage you. Um, you know, you're going to get on there and things are going to be going fine. And then you're going to see a comment or somebody's going to be negative. Uh, you know, it's just the way it is. There, <clears throat> there are people out there that are just miserable. And so really, if somebody leaves you a bad comment or, or says something that's really negative, don't let it depress you. You've just got to look at that and just shake your head and feel very sorry for that person because there's no reason to get on social media and spend your time going to Twitter or going to Facebook or going to Instagram and making a negative comment about somebody. There's just life is too short to, to do that. I mean, there's constructive criticism and there's uh, direct messaging and telling people, you know, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that, but to come out and do it publicly and to just be mean, um, you know, feel sorry for those people. Those people are miserable. They're sad human beings. They're, they're never going to be successful. They're never going anywhere. And that's probably why they're negative because they're jealous of what you're doing and uh, they just can't stand it. So anyway, everybody stay positive. You guys stay safe. Um, we still have this uh, virus thing going on. Um, I have never been one of the big fans of masks, but hey, if all we had to do is wear masks and we could keep everything open and we could go to college football games and indoor basketball games because everybody had masks on, I would do it. Um, but everybody else would have to do it as well and all of the people in charge would have to agree to do that. So um, let's all get on the same page in what we're doing so we can get past all this virus stuff and get back to some normality. And uh, again, if you guys don't have jobs out there, if you've lost your job, please go back to the, some of the prior episodes and listen in and get some ideas on how to start your own online whatever it is and if you have questions hit me up at buzz at buzzheadmedia.com so i am going to probably get out of here for now i have rambled and rambled and this uh, please let me know if this was a, a too much of a rambling episode um, or if not um, if you like an update like this every now and then just let me know and i know as soon as i turn this off i'm gonna there's going to be three things that i'm working on that uh, i'm going to completely remember that I forgot to tell you guys about. But anyway, I can do that on a future episode. So I greatly appreciate you guys. I am waving at you now on the uh, YouTube channel. I'm about to sign off on the podcast. And uh, I actually don't even really have a blog written um, that goes with this episode. So what I'll probably do is put that uh, squirrel video together and uh, post that on the blog and on the YouTube channel. So you guys check that out. And uh, again, stay positive, be happy, keep motivated, and I do appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you soon.